Hello, my name is Pallavi Aisola Balivada, and my project partners are Phoebe Atto and Nogay Ka. Our senior design project is called In Silico Prototyping for an Intranasally Administered Agent for COVID-19 Prophylaxis and Treatment. So as we all know, the coronavirus pandemic continues to place immense pressure on global healthcare systems. Although recent vaccine efforts have been promising, many reports estimate that mass immunization in low-income countries will only be achieved by 2024. There is inequitable distribution of vaccines between low and high resource countries, and to a certain extent, even within high resource countries. Uh, furthermore, complete eradication of the disease is also unlikely due to vaccine hesitancy and new emerging variants of concern. So in the face of all these factors, we see real value in developing complementary approaches to contain the spread of the disease that are more accessible, affordable, and possibly adaptable to new variants. Uh, one such approach is developing therapeutics targeting the early stages of the disease. So the company Fractal Therapeutics has developed a novel combination of approved existing antiviral drugs that could be used for versatile early intervention therapies. These drugs will need to be delivered to the most common initial site of infection for the virus, the nasopharynx. And this is the region that connects the upper respiratory pathway with the nasal cavity. And drugs can be delivered to the site of infection through intranasal administration using nasal sprays or inhalers. Now, since we are delivering a novel combination of approved drugs, we already know what concentrations are safe in humans. So we expect safe and effective dosing through intranasal administration. However, intranasal delivery to the nasopharynx can be challenging due to the complexity of internal nasal anatomy, as well as the lack of uniform usage protocols. So this is where our project comes in. We are a small link in a large chain of the product development pipeline. We are identifying optimal parameters of the drug formulation, as well as the delivery method using a computational approach. So we aim to match these design parameters with existing nasal spray device parameters to deliver an effective drug dose. So the central approach to our project is using computational fluid dynamics to simulate airflow and drug deposition in nasal cavity models. Such computational approaches are gaining traction in medical settings and could cut significant costs and errors that are seen with conventional experimental screens. So during our simulations, we identified key delivery and drug formulation parameters that could be changed to maximize deposition at the target site. We aim for greater than a few percentage points of deposition. And since the drug combination has low toxicity, we don't really have a hard upper limit on our optimization. So we also want to make sure that the optimal parameters are robust to perturbations or changes, since it's quite likely that clinical settings will see slight deviations. And then finally, we want to optimize delivery for a diverse population. Nasal anatomy changes a lot across the population with demographic variables such as age, gender, race, and ethnicity. And all of this can greatly affect drug deposition for each person. So we want to be able to take these factors into account during our optimization. So now going over our workflow, we used models of the nasal cavity constructed from computed tomography or CT scans of two patients. We simulated airflow in the nasal cavity using ANSYS, which sets up and numerically solves fundamental equations describing fluid flow. And then lastly, we simulate the release of a drug formulation through the nostrils to mimic a real nasal spray and then track deposition. So the nasopharynx, our target site, is marked in dark blue in the figure. And the goal of our workflow is to maximize the number of particles that are deposited at the nasopharynx. So we want to highlight a few important parameters of our simulations. The first parameter is the airflow regime, laminar flow or turbulent flow. The resting breathing rate at 15 liters per minute was simulated using a laminar model, which has properties of a smooth path and no vertices. This model does not accurately depict fluid behavior for higher flow rates in the nasal cavity due to effects of turbulence, which is caused by the geometry of the airway. So in order to simulate higher turbulent flow rates, the large eddy simulation, LES model, was used. For the particle diameter of the drug formulation particles, we varied it from 1 to 24 micrometers. For the properties of the device, we first looked at the spray axis in the usage protocol. We started with the current use protocol, where you are told to lean forward at an angle of 22.5 degrees and hold the bottle upright towards your eye. We used this protocol as a starting point for our simulations and got the following results. 
So here's how to interpret this graph. For each nasal cavity, left or right, we simulated two flow rates. The y-axis on each graph shows the percentage of particles deposited at the nasal pharynx. The y-axis was chosen so you could see the improvements we made in the future. The x-axis represents the particle size of the drug formulation. So in this zoomed out graph, the peak deposition reaches only 0.53%, which is lower than our target deposition. So you can see in all these cases that there was very low deposition, nowhere close to the amount you would need for treating the virus. So looking back at the nasal model, most of the particles were trapped in the initial regions of the nasal cavity and wouldn't make it back to the nasal pharynx. So one approach would be to change the angle of the nasal spray. So we came up with a perturbed direction using a set of guidelines. First, we want the axis to hit the nasal pharynx, the target site. We want the axis to not hit the nasal septum, which is the wall dividing the two cavities. And lastly, we want the axis to hit the lateral wall as far back in as possible. Particles can easily get trapped on the lateral wall and septum wall, which reduces the efficiency of the delivery. These three criteria can begin to ensure that the spray axis has minimum off-target hits. Okay, so we went back and we redid all these simulations and ended up getting much better results. So all four cases show that the perturbed direction of the spray axis results in higher deposition peaks at the nasopharynx in comparison to the current use protocol for a defined range of particle sizes. So examining the deposition in graph B for 15 liters per minute, going from the current use to perturbed direction, the peak deposition increases from 0.5% to 46.5%. So this is a near 100-fold increase in deposition. These results indicate that optimizing the angle of delivery using a visual line of sight based protocol can potentially improve success in targeting the nasopharynx for certain ranges of particle sizes. So one trend that you might notice is that for both nostrils, the peaks for LES are shifted towards the left or towards the smaller particle sizes. So to explain this trend, at different flow rates, we turn to the underlying physics of the flow. The results of this analysis show that when higher flow rates are applied, smaller particles can be carried much further along the nasal cavity, and this enables more particles to successfully reach the nasal pharynx. So next, we wanted to see if our protocol for perturbation held up for other patients. So we did the same thing for the nasal cavity of a second patient. The perturbed direction does do better than the current use protocol for almost all of these cases. So in clinical settings, we would expect to see deviations in the spray angle. So we decided to test the sensitivity of the identified perturbed directions by slightly perturbing them further. Each different colored line here represents a different direction for aligning the nasal spray bottle. We ran simulations for each of these different cases. These were our results for each model with the tolerance sensitivity direction. The idea of these results is that even when we change the angle of the perturbed direction, we still end up getting a high percentage of deposition at the nasal pharynx. To verify our results, we performed Pearson's correlation calculations. We found that the Pearson's coefficient was close to one, in this case of model one, right nostril, and greater than 0.5 for nearly every other new perturbed direction. This shows a high degree of linearity between the new perturbed directions and the original perturbed direction. These results give us high confidence that changing the angle of the nasal spray will optimize deposition. Another, another trend this data shows is that deposition in each nasal cavity varies a lot between different patients and also within the left and right cavities of a single patient. So given that noses, noses vary significantly between individuals, we need to extend our analysis to nasal models representing the global population. However, we are limited by the fact that patient scans of the nasal cavity are not readily available, especially from low resource settings. To address this problem, future studies will create synthetic nasal models and then feed them through our computational fluid dynamics workflow. We began working on this approach by first doing a literature review to identify which features of the nasal cavity affect deposition and airflow. Then we collected estimates from literature about how some of these features vary across different age, gender, race, and ethnic backgrounds. Future groups would use this data to create statistical models and then a CAD protocol to create synthetic nasal geometries. This approach allows us to optimize delivery for a much larger set of models.
In our literature review, we identify data sets for several internal nasal anatomic features that affect deposition. Here, we want to highlight the cross-sectional area of the nasal valve. This is the narrowest region of the nasal cavity and contributes to a lot of the resistance to flow. These are the ranges of the cross-sectional area across three different race groups. These data sets will be used for statistical modeling. In conclusion, we see that perturbing the nasal spray axes can dramatically improve intranasal delivery to posterior regions of the nasal cavity. This perturbation is also tolerant to slight deviations. Our study is useful in the context of improving delivery of a therapeutic treating COVID-19. However, this computational platform could also be extended to future respiratory diseases that would require intranasal delivery. Lastly, we also foresee applications in personalized medicine. There is a critical need for engineering methods that consider population variability and adequately represent different age, gender, race, and ethnic groups in medical studies. We really hope that our project has laid the groundwork for such approaches. Thank you for your time. This project was also done in collaboration with Yu Ying Lao, a graduate student at Boston University. And we also want to special, specially acknowledge our supervisors, Dr. Joseph McCarthy, Dr. Chakravarti, and Dr. Basu. Thank you.